Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Konoha. Sharingan Left Eye, by Akugan Right Eye. Chapter 61. Returning to the tent, the Inazuka Jot team was already in the tent preparing to rest. After seeing Shinosuke's team returning, several people exchanged greetings. Because the Inazuka Jot team's combat effectiveness was not too strong, Inazuka Ja decided to lead Anko and several others to clean up the surrounding soldiers. Unexpectedly, the San Shinobi retreated one after another before the fight lasted too long, and the auxiliary medical personnel rescued some wounded people. Afterwards, the team returned to the tent to rest. Call. Fung threw himself on the bed board. After a day of running around, he was attacked by San Shinobi at night before he had time to rest. Then he rescued the wounded from behind. After being busy, even Feng's strong mental power felt a little tired. Close your eyes and spend the first night on the battlefield like this. The next day, Shinosuke's team, who got up early, was told that the first batch of supplies would be arriving today, and asked Kaide and the other three to help, while Shinosuke was called to the combat meeting by Hitaki Sakumo. The three Feng people were walking in the camp. The ground was full of traces of the battle last night. The wails of the wounded could be heard from the dilapidated tents, which made several people feel a little heavy. When they arrived at the entrance of the camp, the supplies had already arrived. Fung and the other three stepped forward to unload the goods together with the escorting ninjas. During this period, Kaide saw Namikaze Minato walking straight into the camp alone, probably going to find Hitaki Sakumo and others for a meeting. Fung didn't pay attention, picked up a box of supplies and handed it to Lu Fung next to him. And so on. Food, weapons, medicine, and all kinds of miscellaneous things were transported into the camp one by one. On the other side, in the military camp's commander's tent, most of the Jonan and senior officials in the camp were gathered together, sitting together for a war meeting. Hitaki Sakumo was sitting in the first place, Jiraiya was sitting next to him, and Namikaze Minato, whom Kaide saw in front of him, was there. Head. Everyone's eyes were focused on Namikaze Minato who stood up. This is the situation. Sunagakar was under martial law some time ago. This information was obtained by Anbu who finally sneaked into the Kingdom of Wind and obtained it from spies. Sunagakar, he's out of his mind. The disappearance of their third case cage has nothing to do with us in Konoha. Calm down, Ja. As soon as Minato finished speaking, Inazuka Ja slapped the table and stood up, shouting angrily. Shinosuke, who was sitting next to him, pressed his shoulders and motioned for him to sit down. Inazuka gritted his teeth, after sitting down, everyone turned their attention to Hitaki Sakumo, who was sitting in the first place. It doesn't matter what the reason is now. The war has already started and it won't end so easily. If they want to fight, we will fight with them. Having said this, Hitaki Sakumo paused. Then he turned his attention to Namikaze Minato. Minato, hurry up and go back and report to Lord Hokage. By the way, let the second batch of support troops come back as soon as possible. There is still some shortage of manpower here. Yes. Namikaze Minato nodded, stood up and left. In addition to escorting supplies, he also had the task of conveying intelligence when he came this time. During the war, there was no room for slacking off. We must convey the news as soon as possible. As soon as he walked out of the handsome tent, Kaide bumped into Namikaze Minato. Namikaze Minato was stunned when he saw it was Kaide, and then smiled. It turns out to be Kaide. Tsunade-sama asked me to send a message if I meet you, asking you to be careful and protect your companions. And. Don't die. Fung was slightly stunned, with a touch of emotion in his eyes. Thank you, Brother Minato. Help me tell Teacher Tsunade that I will pay attention to it so that she doesn't have to worry. Del. Namikaze Minato nodded, then looked up at the sun. He lowered his head and said. It's time for me to go back, Fung, please be more careful here. Although I know you are very strong, it's still better to be careful. Okay, it's time for me to go. Goodbye. Goodbye. Kaide waved to Minato who was walking away, because he was sighing in his heart. Sure enough, those who are capable work hard. Because of their fast speed, the yellow flash in the future will be used as a bodyguard and messenger, just like a monkey who clocks into work every day and gets off work at the same time. Fung, who was about to return to his tent, suddenly saw a camp with medical signs painted next to it, and there were faint screams coming from inside. 
Feng hesitated for a moment, and finally stepped into the camp. Feng followed the sound to a tent and walked in. There were six beds inside, with a ninja lying on each bed. These ninjas had one thing in common, they were all seriously injured. Feng's eyes moved slightly. The two large area burns were probably caused by the detonating talisman. Although they would leave large area burn scars, their lives were safe. There were two other ninjas who were the same screams that Feng heard before. After seeing the scene in front of him, Feng was also a little silent. One of the two teenagers lost his left hand and was crying uncontrollably. One was lying on the bed ashen, with layers of white cloth around his head. He had lost his eyes. Turning his eyes to the other side, the two young men's faces turned purple and they were confused. They must have been poisoned by San Shinobi. It is not life-threatening at the moment, but if it is delayed any longer, he will die within three days. Who are you? Who allowed you to enter here? A stern rebuke interrupted Feng's thoughts. When he turned his head, the woman said in surprise. Maple. Feng bowed slightly to say hello to the visitor. It's me, Aunt Maiko. That's right, the person who came was none other than Konoha's deputy dean, the person in charge of this medical ninja team, Kana Maiko. At this time, she was wearing a ninja costume and holding a medical kit in her right hand. It seemed that when she came back to treat the patients here, she bumped into Feng who broke in. You came just in time. These two patients were hit by poisonous needles fired by San Shinobi's puppet master yesterday on the battlefield. Although the poisonous needles were cleaned out, the toxin has penetrated into the body, and the toxin seems to be San Shinobi's Chiyo Shin. The medical department is working hard to crack the developed toxin, but there will be no clue at 10.30. Now Song Neng is hanging with the antidote. I will take you there. Take the time to crack this toxin. Quote. After saying that, Kana Maiko turned around and pulled Kaide out of the tent and walked to the other side. As for doubting Kaide, Kana Maiko has seen that under Tsunade's guidance, Kaide's achievements in medical ninja are not much worse than her aunt. In the past two years, Tsunade has often found practical training for Kaide at Konoha Hospital. Tsunade treats various difficult and complicated diseases in front of him, and Feng learns from the side. This kind of one-on-one -on -one teaching is combined with Feng's transcendent talent in medical treatment. If she hadn't known that her nephew had no intention of going too far in the field of medical ninja, she would have wanted to drag Feng over to take her over. Huh, that's all we can do now. Kaide put down the reagent bottle in his hand and shook his head at Kanamaiko. T-Y-J-O-S. Kanamaiko's eyes were a little gloomy. After all, considering the condition of the poisoned patients in the ward, they might not be able to survive for long. Aunt Maiko, this is not an ordinary poison. The antidote we developed can only temporarily stabilize the poison in the body of the poisoned person, but cannot completely cure it. This may be a new type of poison prepared by the commander in chief Chio himself. Fit. Kana Maiko fell silent. Chio of Sunagakar is not only a superb puppet master, but also an all round female ninja with powerful physical skills, sealing skills, and medical ninjutsu. However, regarding medical ninjutsu, in addition to saving lives and healing the wounded, Chio is not weak in the research of toxins. Basically, San Shinobi is more or less using the poison from 403, developed by Chio, tempering it on ninja tools or working with puppets, the mechanism can cause greater damage. Although Chio's knowledge of poisons is astonishing, Tsunade's medical skills are not weaker than hers, and are even slightly better. Aunt Maiko, please apply to the commander-in-chief to transfer Mr. Tsunade. Only she can detoxify this kind of poison. All we can do at the moment is hang their lives, and it won't be a problem if this continues. Feng said in a deep voice. He couldn't break this level of poison, so he had to find help. Fortunately, it was discovered early, otherwise no one would be able to bear it when a large-scale war breaks out later. Okay, I will apply to the commander-in-chief right now. You can go back and rest first. You have worked hard today. It's okay, you can go ahead. Kana Maiko nodded towards Feng, turned around and walked out of the tent towards the handsome tent. It would take time for Tsunade to arrive from Konoha village, and the condition of the injured could not completely guarantee safety. If the antidote is researched earlier, maybe a few more lives can be saved. Ah sneeze. Feng took off his white coat and sneezed twice as soon as he walked out of the tent. 
He subconsciously raised his hand to cover his clothes. Has the season changed? Feng walked quickly outside the medical camp with a wry smile on his face. I won't pick a time for the war. Judging from the current situation, there is a high probability that we will celebrate the new year in a tent this year. Does it have to be like this, Vice President Nye? At this time, there were only three people in the handsome tent, Hitaki Sakumo, Jiraiya, and Kanamaiko. The two fell into silence after listening to Kanamaiko's report. Unexpectedly, San Shinobi made a show of force at the beginning. All the medical ninjas in the camp were helpless against this new poison. It seemed that they could only report the situation to the village and replace Tsunade. This is the only way. Apart from Tsunade, no one else on our side can crack the poison developed by Chio. If this poison is allowed to be used by San Shinobi in battle, the consequences will be disastrous. Hitaki Sakumo said in a deep voice, turning his head to look at Jiraiya sitting beside him. Without further ado, Jiraiya, go get Tsunade and leave now. Yes. Jiraiya got up and got the order, turned around and walked out of the commander's tent, preparing to return to the village. As for why Jiraiya was replaced, all three of them knew it. Not only Sunagakar, Rock Shinobi and Cloud Shinobi are also watching with eager eyes. Most of Konoha's troops are stationed on these two sides. After all, San Shinobi has taken action, and it will only be a matter of time before they end. As for Mist Shinobi, we can only let it go for now. Serutobi Hirazan is already preparing to transfer Orochimaru to the front line of Cloud Shinobi for early prevention. After this transfer, Jiraiya should be sent to the front line of Rock Shinobi. Feng, you're back. Kaide, who had just returned to the tent to rest, bumped into Shinosuke who had just returned. Yes, Captain, is there any mission? Shinosuke lay down on the bed, stretched out a lot, and then tilted his head towards Kaide. I don't have any tasks today, but I will be busy starting tomorrow. Take the time to rest. I passed by the medical camp earlier and saw you being taken away by Vice President Kana. How is it? Is the matter resolved? Well, the situation is not good. I have some antidotes here. Everyone should bring some tomorrow. Isn't it good? I know, go to bed early. Shinosuke muttered and turned away, falling into a light sleep after a while. Just as Feng was about to take a rest, he heard a sound coming from the door of the tent. Following the sound, he saw that it was Lu Feng and Zanji who had returned. It's just that the two of them looked a little embarrassed, with some rotten soil and scattered leaves stuck to their bodies. It's like, taking action with someone. Captain, take a rest. Where did you two go and come back so late? The two looked at each other, walked to their respective beds and sat down, and were the first to speak in the morning. We went to spar. Feng simply couldn't complain. How could these two people be so energetic? Why would they come to compete at this time? From a visual inspection, it should be a physical battle. If you use ninjutsu, the noise you make may have been discovered by the Konoha shinobi on patrol. The best situation is that you will be caught and imprisoned. If you are regarded as an enemy by one of your own and severely injured, who can you talk to for explanation? The two of them felt a little embarrassed when they saw the strange look on Feng's face. After each of them patted the dust and debris on their bodies, they lay on the bed and began to fall asleep. Feng muttered, turned around and was about to take a rest when he noticed a few empty beds next to him. Strange, Anko and his team haven't come back yet. Although Feng was a little confused, he didn't pay much attention to it. A hint of sleepiness appeared in his mind, and he closed his eyes and fell into a light sleep. The next day, after a peaceful night's rest, Feng just opened his eyes. Not long after, the three people in his team also woke up one after another. Shinosuke told the others to wait here for a while while he went to pick up today's mission. Didn't they come back last night? Kaide said doubtfully while straightening the wrinkled bed. There was no trace of anyone sleeping on those beds, and Feng didn't feel anyone coming back in the middle of the night last night. 3.7. Oh. They are a reconnaissance squad. Yesterday we saw their team in the camp on a night patrol assigned to the mission. They should be back to rest soon. I wonder what our mission today will be. Lu Feng nodded and said, and Zazao next to him closed his eyes and rested his mind while also taking over the conversation. It turns out that there are only a few tasks that can be done. I can't say for sure now. I'll wait until the captain comes back to inform me. The two nodded. 
After yesterday's discussion, the atmosphere between the two seemed to be a lot more harmonious. Feng was happy to see it. It's not a bad thing to have a better relationship between teammates. After a while, Shinosuke came back and stood in front of the three people and told them their mission today. Our task today is, patrol. The three of them looked at their captain speechlessly. You were given a patrol mission so seriously that we almost thought we were asked to go to the San Shinobi camp at night. Okay, let's set off. First go to the camp entrance to hand over the work to the night patrol team. Shinosuke didn't seem to see the expressions of the three people, so he turned around and walked out. The three of them could only keep up. On the way, Feng took out a few antidotes from his body and handed one to each of the three people. Feng explained while posting. Antidote, just in case you need it, take it with you. Several people nodded, took the antidote and put it into the ninja bag on their waist. After a while, several people arrived at the entrance of the camp. What surprised a few people was that the Inazuka Jot team was also here, but they were a little depressed. Shinosuke, your team is here to take over the patrol work, right? Inazuka Ja was not too surprised when he saw a few people. He yawned and started to hand over the work. I understand, you can go back and rest. Okay, I'll leave this to you, we'll withdraw. After the explanation, Inazuka Jiu took his yawning and chatting team back to rest. Even the dog looked at 25 and stared in confusion. Let's go, start taking action. Yes, by three inches. Several people began to patrol outwards from the center of the camp. Like them, there were seven or eight teams, each responsible for an area. Fung and the others were responsible for the direction close to San Shinobi. They cheered up and started patrolling in the forest. Three poles high in the sun, several people who had completed the patrol gathered together again. Everything is normal. Lu Feng leaned on a tree branch and reported to Shinosuk. Same here. Morning nodded to Shinosuk to indicate that everything was okay. Then Shinosuk turned his attention to Kaide. Everything is normal here. After listening to the reports of the three people, Shinosuk nodded. After looking around, he said in a deep voice. We can go back after one more patrol. The mission will be over in the morning. A few people nodded and started the second patrol. The people were not too scattered, but spread out in a fan shape not far apart. This not only expands the patrol range, but also allows you to call your companions for support at any time after encountering enemies. Um, Feng squatted on a tree branch, and after looking around for a while, he was about to leave. Suddenly he sensed that two creatures had entered his range of perception and were still approaching. Kaide didn't dare to neglect and hurried to Shinosuke's side. Within a few breaths, everyone gathered around Kaide. Shinosuke asked in a low voice. What's the situation? Two people entered my perception range from the direction of San Shinobi, and they are still approaching here. How far are we from? 900 meters, they are not very fast, they should be back here in 5 minutes. Dot dot dot. Shinosuke was silent for a moment, then raised his head and said. Be prepared for battle, we will ambush you on the spot. If you can capture him alive, that would be the best. No need to force him. A few people nodded, and then quickly ambush on both sides. Time was running out and there was no time to set up traps. Kaide was in a group with Zazao, and Shinosuke was in a group with Lu Feng. The four of them held their breath and concentrated, hiding in the jungle and starting to squat. After a while, two figures appeared in the field of vision of several people, but what surprised a few people was that these two people seemed, a little weak. Brother Jen, can we go back? Are we too deep into the enemy camp? What's the use of going back now? When we kill two Konoha shinobi and bring them back, Lord Ebizo will definitely accept us as his apprentices. Don't you want to become Lord Ebizo's apprentice? Idiot. Suzuki Shinji looked at Murakami Ueki next to him and said with hatred. The two of them are among the few geniuses of the younger generation of San Shinobi. Not only do they have prominent family backgrounds, but they have also become special Jonin at a young age. Yesterday, when they met Ebizo in the camp, they were encouraged by the latter with a smile. He even said that as long as the two of them fought bravely, they might be considered to be their disciples. As soon as these words came out, the two of them were excited and confused. The two of them had extraordinary self-control, so even if they couldn't fight and escape, it shouldn't be a big problem. 
That night we discussed and decided to sneak into the Konoha camp the next day and kill two Konoha shinobi and take them back as a teacher ceremony. Who would have thought that these two people were quite lucky? They took advantage of the Konoha patrol shift change and successfully escaped the first wave of searches and reached the second line of defense, which is Konoha Ray land. Okay, we should be able to meet the enemy soon, so be careful. Although Suzuki Shinji was impulsive, he still had to be careful when rashly approaching the enemy's base camp. The two of them hid their figures and moved forward. At this moment, a sudden change occurred. Water-style water dragon bomb. By two inches. The faces of the two people who were sneaking changed wildly, and they looked at the grass next to them. Two water dragons rushed towards the two people without warning, and it was too late to get out of the way. Earth-style earth-style wall. By two inches, the two quickly formed seals and clapped their hands on the ground. Two earthen walls rose up in front of the two of them, and they collided with the pair of water dragons that had already rushed forward. Boom! After a loud noise, the earth wall collapsed and earth and rocks flew everywhere. But the water dragon was also unable to continue and shattered in the air. Retreat! Suzuki Shinji stepped back and shouted to Murakami Ueki next to him. They originally wanted to assassinate the two Konoha shinobi, but as soon as the battle started, the nearby patrol teams must have been attracted. If they didn't retreat, they would be in trouble. Fire-style dragon fire technique. Earth-style earth stone dragon technique. Next to him, Shinosuke and Lu Feng also launched ninjutsu. Lu Feng sprayed out several flames from his mouth and formed a flame dragon head 343 in the sky to attack Murakami Juju. A huge earth dragon made of mud and rocks rushed towards Suzuki Shinji. The target was aimed directly at the two people who were still in midair with nowhere to rely on. Not good. Suzuki Shinji no longer cared about his teammates at this time. When he landed on the ground, he quickly formed seals with his hands, and Tulong also rushed forward. Head on collision. The huge impact of the earth dragon knocked down three big trees in a row before it was able to stop. Who? Who? Among the collapsed earth dragons, Suzuki Shinji struggled to climb out of the earth. After taking a look at the tattered body underneath, he ignored the planting of trees under the village and turned around and rushed towards the outside. Dark walk technique. For a moment, Suzuki Shinji and Murakami Ueki were stunned on the spot. At this time, they had lost all feelings. What? Water style water prison technique. Um. Suzuki Shinji's eyes widened. Two meters square around his body was submerged in water. He subconsciously opened his mouth and quickly took a sip of water. As soon as he closed his mouth, he felt a weak sense of suffocation. His limbs were unable to move, and he completely lost the ability to resist. Force. Ah. Suzuki Shinji's eyes moved to the left. His companion was slashed by several vacuum sword energy. His limbs were crippled, and he was pressed to the ground by a ninja while filling his mouth with a cloth to prevent him from biting his tongue and committing suicide. A trace of death appeared on Suzuki Shinji's face. This time, it was really over. What's the situation? Several sounds broke through the air, and several Konoha shinobi held kanai, standing on the tree trunks and watching everyone present with vigilant faces. There are still small teams approaching here. There was so much movement here that the surrounding patrol teams were attracted by the explosion. But seeing the two sand shinobi who had been captured, the gathered Konoha shinobi did not act rashly but did not relax their vigilance either. Instead, they stood in place and guarded the few people present. After Shinosuke reacted, he raised his finger and pointed at Suzuki Shinji, who was almost suffocating in the water prison, and Murakami Ueki, who was pressed under him in the distance. Shen Sheng explained. I am Konoha John and Serutobi Shinosuke. Our team discovered two sand shinobi while performing patrol missions and captured them. This is what happened. Konoha Camp. Suzuki Shinji and Murakami Ueki sat slumped on the ground with rags stuffed in their mouths. His eyes were drooping there. It looked lifeless. Hitaki Sakuma walked around the two of them with a strange expression, and then turned his head to Shinosuke and the others. Is this, your prisoner? Yes, Sakumo senpei Shinosuke took a step forward and stared straight ahead. When we were patrolling, Kaide sensed the infiltration of these two San Shinobi. Then we ambushed them on their only way and captured them. The strength of these two people is at the special Jonin level, and their purpose is still unclear. 
Well done, I'll give your team a credit first. Hitaki Sakumo paused and shouted outside the tent. Shikaku, come in. Yes, Sakumo senpei As soon as he finished speaking, several people walked into the tent. It was Konoha's contemporary, Ino Shika Cho. Hi Yi, I'm sorry to trouble you, let's do a brief check first. Hitaki glanced at Yamanaka and signaled him to use secret techniques to check their memories. Yes, the commander in chief spoke, and Yamanaka Hai did not dare to neglect. He took two steps forward and squatted in front of the two of them. He placed his left hand on Suzuki Shinji's head and closed his eyes. Ninja mind reading technique. Suzuki Shinji's pupils were dilated, with a look of fear in his eyes. He wanted to struggle, but because he was restrained, he could only have Yamanaka Haiichi read the memory honestly. The reason why, Ino Shika Cho, is famous in the ninja world is related to the secret techniques of their various clans. The secret technique of the Yamanaka clan is dominated by the Yin Escape Chakra, which controls mental power to invade other people's minds to obtain intelligence, and can also forcefully control the enemy during battle. What are you doing? At this moment, a voice came from the entrance of the tent. Except for Yamanaka Hai, who was concentrating on reading the memory, everyone else focused their eyes on it, and then everyone's eyes became surprised. Fung took two steps forward and walked up to the visitor, bowed and said with a smile. Here you are, Tsunade Sensei. That's right, the person who came was none other than Tsunade who had been replaced by Jiraiya. After Sarutobi Hirazan learned about the situation on the front line, he made a prompt decision and sent Tsunade over. After all, the only person in Konoha who could stabilize Chio's medical skills was Tsunade. Then after receiving the order, Tsunade rushed over all night after a long journey. Hey, Fung, you kid, you don't even tell my teacher in advance when you come to the battlefield. You have become more capable, right? Tsunade pulled Kaide closer, tucked it under his arm, raised his left fist and looked down at Kaide with a half smile. Ahem, Mr. Tsunade, please calm down. I was wrong. The situation was urgent. If there is a next time, I will definitely inform you first. Feng's neck hurt from being pinched by his teacher, but he could also vaguely feel a hint of softness under his breastplate. Feng smiled sarcastically and quickly made a promise. Do you still want a next time? Tsunade raised his eyebrows, raised his fist and was about to teach Kaide a lesson, but Nara Shikaku helped Kaide out in time. Tsunade-sama, you are here at the right time. Today Shinosuke's team captured two San Shinobi special Jonin who were sneaking over. We will listen to Haiichi after checking whether there is any information about Chio's new toxin. Maybe he will develop a serum for you. Helps. Humph, brat, I'll settle the score with you after I'm done. Sakumo senpei Tsunade walked up to Hitaki Sakumo and nodded. Although Sanin has been famous for many years, Hitaki Sakumo's reputation as Konoha's White Fang appeared earlier than them. When their Sanin were still barely able to compete with Hanzo on the battlefield of the Land of Rain, Hitaki Sakumo had already killed Super God in other battlefields. Therefore, the main ninja has always maintained due respect for Hatamizu Sakumo. Hitaki Sakumo nodded to Tsunade, and then several people began to wait patiently for the results. Tsunade let go of Kaide, and Kaide hurriedly ran back to stand among his companions, and at the same time cast a grateful look at Nara Shikaku. Nara Shikaku noticed Kaide's gaze and showed him a helpless smile. Her eyes told him to calm down. Under the eyes of everyone, time passed by minute by minute. Yamanaka Haiichi slowly opened his eyes, took his hands away from Suzuki Shinji's head, stood up and took a long breath. Suzuki Shinji fell into sluggishness. This secret technique of reading memories will cause certain damage to the brain of the person being read. But on the battlefield, there are not so many scruples. Lord Tsunade. After Yamanaka Hai noticed Tsunade, although he was a little confused, he still hurriedly saluted. Tsunade waved his hand to indicate that he didn't need to be so polite. Hai Yi, please tell me the information you have checked quickly. Nara Shikaku patted Yamanaka Haiichi's shoulder and motioned him to tell him the result quickly. After all, several pairs of eyes were waiting here. Good. Yamanaka Hai nodded slightly, sorted out his thoughts for a while, raised his head after thinking for a moment, and spoke slowly to everyone. 
According to intelligence, the purpose of these two coming here is not to spy on intelligence. Huh, if it's not to spy on information, then why are the two of them, especially Jonan, sneaking around the Konoha camp? Shinosuke asked the question on behalf of everyone. Yamanaka Haiyi looked down at the two people who were tied up in a strange way, and then continued. The two of them were encouraged by Ebizo, the deputy commander of San Shinobi, and said that if they performed well on the battlefield, they would be accepted as disciples. Then, dot the two of them planned to sneak near the camp and kill two Konoha Shinobi before returning. Apprenticeship. Several people all looked at the two people on the ground with strange expressions. How did they become San Shinobi's special Jonin with such intelligence? Is there anyone in Sunagakur? Sure enough, the world of ninja is so big that nothing is surprising. Also, I have received information that Chio has indeed developed a new type of toxin, which is being mass-produced in the Kingdom of Wind during this period, and has begun to be widely used in San Shinobi. Is that really the case? Kaide secretly thought that no one else except Chio could develop that level of toxin in San Shinobi, although it would be a bit troublesome. But, Kaide looked at his teacher, Tsunade nodded to Kaide, and the two looked at each other and smiled. Nothing to worry about. Okay, I know what I need to know. I'd better go check on the wounded first. Brat, lead the way. Tsunade strode out and asked Kaide to leave with him. Yes, Tsunade-sensei. Feng waved to a few people in his team, and under the helpless looks of a few people, he followed Tsunade outside. Tsunade-sensei, what's going on with Rock Shinobi and Cloud Shinobi? Tsunade glanced at Feng and said as he walked. The old man has sent Jiraiya to the Rock Shinobi front, and Orochimaru has also been sent to guard the Cloud Shinobi front. Those guys are all ready to move, and the battle is not far away. Having said this, Tsunade paused, turned his head and looked at Feng meaningfully before continuing. When I left, I heard from Makoto that your little girlfriend will be sent to the Rock Shinobi border soon. Del. Feng's expression changed slightly, but he became calm again in an instant. After Tsunade noticed Kaide's change, he reached out and patted Kaide on the shoulder. Don't worry, I asked Jiraiya to take more care of her when I left. Plus her father also went with her, so safety should be guaranteed. Feng was slightly relieved after hearing this, and scratched his head in embarrassment. Thank you Tsunade-sensei. You brat, why are you so polite to your teacher? Tsunade laughed and cursed. Not long after, the two of them had arrived at the medical camp. All the way to the tent for the wounded, they saw Maiko Kana walking from a distance. Kana Maiko was slightly startled when she saw the two of them, but soon a joyful smile appeared on her face. Tsunade, you are finally here, then I feel more relieved. Ha ha ha, don't worry about Maiko, wait until I clean up and check the condition of the wounded. Kana Maiko nodded. After a few people entered, Feng discovered that the condition of the two poisoned people seemed to be a bit more serious than last time. The situation is not very good. We can only use some drugs to stabilize the toxicity in their bodies. However, using too much of this anti-toxic agent will make patients resistant to the drug. According to their current situation, they will not be able to survive for long. D. Tsunade walked up to the two of them, observed them, picked up the medical records and began to analyze them, and began to think deeply. Desert Silver Snake. Once bitten, there will be pain, swelling and fever, which are distributed throughout the Feng Ji CFBJ library. Sand-tailed scorpion. It will hide its body in the sand and blend in with the environment, waiting for its prey to come to your door. Its venom is not very poisonous, but it has a high disability rate. Speaking of this, Tsunade's voice paused and he was amazed. Eating dibixing will cause neurological disorders, eating centennial orchid will cause strong hallucinations, and the dried poison hemlock leaves are shockingly toxic. Tisk, 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 this old woman is really cruel. After saying that, Tsunade turned around and looked at the two of them. Have you got any toxin samples extracted? If all goes well, we can develop an antidote in the next two days. Kana Maiko looked at Tsunade with some embarrassment. Currently we know the existence of this virus because of these two patients. As for the samples, I'm afraid. Wait, just a moment. Feng's eyes suddenly lit up, he turned around and ran out, leaving only one sentence that left the two of them confused. 
Fang Yi Luffy rushed to the handsome tent, and Feng rushed in immediately after being informed by the guards. At this time, only Hitaki Sakumo and Nara Shikaku were standing in front of the terrain map and sand table, not knowing what they were talking about. Seeing Kaide rushing in in a hurry, both of them were a little confused. Feng, what are you doing? As soon as Nara Shikaku finished asking, Kaide asked anxiously. Uncle Shikaku, where are the two captured dogs? They were sent to the torture department. What happened? Nara Shikaku said with a puzzled look on his face, not knowing where Kaide sang. The research on anti-venom serum has a direction, but there is a lack of toxin samples. I remember that the two sand shinobi kanai quenched the poison, and they should still have it on their bodies, so. I understand, you come with us. Before Kaide could finish speaking, the two of them understood what he meant. Hitaki Sakumo said with a serious face, and then walked out first. The two followed closely behind. The three of them went all the way to the torture department. After finding Suzuki Shinji and Yamanaka Jen, they were still groggy and confused. Feng stepped forward and groped around the two of them, and pulled out a bunch of messy things from their pockets. A few scattered matches, half a box of cigarettes, and, a picture of a girl. After a moment of silence, Feng put the photo back into their pockets. Picking up their ninja tool bag, Feng's eyes lit up after rummaging through it, and he found it. Hitaki Sakumo and Nara Shikaku focused their attention on Kaide and asked eagerly. How is it? Is there any? Feng raised a reagent bottle and caught the eyes of the three of them. The remaining half of the black unknown liquid inside should be the toxin newly developed by Chio. It should be, I'll take it now. Kaide nodded to the two of them, and rushed out of the torture department and rushed to the medical camp. After a while, Kaide came to the two of them. After Kaide handed the reagent bottle to Tsunade, he stood aside and had some conversation with Kanamaiko. He stared at Tsunade nervously. Seeing Tsunade nod slightly after testing, Kaide and Kanamaiko both breathed a sigh of relief. Finally, we can continue with the next research. We have the samples, let's go, if everything goes well, the results will be available in the next two days. Okay, then I'll go back and rest first. Come on. Feng turned around and left. What he was thinking about now was to go back to the tent and have a good sleep. But it seems that things are not going as he expected. Where are you going, Maple? Kaide felt her collar being grabbed, and then Tsunade came forward with a smile on her face. Quote dot dot dot. Master, I think this is. Before Kaide could finish speaking, Tsunade dragged Kaide towards the outside of the tent. Stop talking nonsense, come and help me, just like you, when can you become Hokage? Maiko, where is the laboratory, take me there, I have been very busy these two days. I'm coming. Kana Maiko covered her mouth and snickered as she walked. These two don't get along like a master and a disciple at all, um, but more like a brother and sister. Kana Maiko shook her head, shook off the chaotic thoughts, took the two of them to the laboratory and left. After all, as the person in charge of the medical camp, she is also very busy. Then let's get started, Fung, don't even think about being lazy, otherwise, you know the consequences. Looking at Tsunade with a half smile and clenched fists in front of him. Fung swallowed a mouthful of saliva, feeling like crying but without tears. How could this be possible? I am still a child. Is it too late to change my teacher now? Ah, it finally worked. A shout came from a tent in the medical camp. A group of injured people who were resting early in the morning almost suffered internal injuries from the shock. One by one, they struggled to get up, thinking that San Shinobi was attacking again. Inside the casualty tent, Feng looked at the wounded man whose complexion slowly turned rosy in front of him and waved his fist excitedly. His eyes also turned red. It's not easy, it's not easy. For three consecutive days, I went in full of energy in the morning and came out exhausted at night. I beat my teacher for three days. Countless experiments were done. Hard work pays off. Finally the poison of this old woman was broken. Ah. Feng Gang's red eyes turned red again. He squatted on the ground with his head in his hands. He raised his head and saw waves of pain in his head when he saw Tsunade's retracted fist. It seems to be unpacked. Asshole, what's your name? Do you want me to teach you that you are not allowed to make loud noises in the hospital? Tsunade said angrily. 
Fang could only laugh from the sidelines, saying that his teacher would be beaten whenever he could, and he could not be offended if he could not offend him. Okay, you go tell Maiko that we can start mass production of anti-venom serum. I'm going to take a nap first, I'm so sleepy. Tsunade stretched, rubbed his eyes and walked out after giving instructions. She didn't get much rest in the past two days. She stayed up all night for several times, and the dark circles under her eyes were as heavy as if she had turned on the original sage mode. Yes, teacher Jisho, Kaide said in response. After giving the anti-venom serum to Kanamaiko, Kaide was sent back to rest by Kanamaiko. After returning to the tent, everyone went out to perform tasks, and the entire tent was empty. Shinosuke and others also knew that Kaide was assisting Tsunade in developing serum these two days, so they did not call him. In a daze, Feng fell asleep. When I woke up, the sky outside had already darkened. Feng stood up fiercely, looking around while a cold sweat broke out on his back. I accidentally fell into deep sleep. If an enemy sneaked in and stabbed me, I wouldn't even know it. Feng beat his head in annoyance, but it could be regarded as a warning to Feng. This was not Konoha, but a battlefield where no one was left alive if he was not careful. I have finally found a good teacher, learned a good skill, and have not yet become famous in the ninja world. It is not worth it if I lose my life because of my temporary relaxation. After sitting back on the bed, Feng felt a little hungry. Feng, who was too lazy to get up and move to look for food, took out a soldier food pill from his body. Just put it in my mouth. The tent curtain was lifted. Several figures walked in one after another and met Feng's eyes. Kaide, why did you come back so early today? Are you finished at Tsunade-sama's place? Shinosuke asked with some confusion when he saw Kaide sitting cross-legged on the bed, followed by Lu Kaide and Zhao Ji. However, several people were a little embarrassed and had some wounds, but after taking a look, Feng found that they were all minor injuries and nothing serious. The mission over there was completed, so I came back and rested for a while. Who knew I fell asleep and you guys came back just as I got up? What is, what's going on with you guys? After Feng finished speaking, he focused his gaze on the three of them and swept back and forth. Shinosuke scratched his head. He walked to the bed and sat down, picked up the kettle and, gulu gulu, drank half of the bottle of water and then turned to look at Feng. Today the San Shinobi organization launched a small-scale team battle. The team was led by San Shinobi's Ebizo, and our team was led by Nara Shikaku Senpei and Akamaiki Choza Senpei. Unexpectedly, those from San Shinobi secretly ambush a team of puppet masters. We suffered a small loss, and many of our companions were poisoned, but fortunately there were not many casualties. So that's how it is, but with your strength, how could it be like this? This is also a point that makes Kaide more confused. Logically speaking, with the strength of Shinosuke Elite Jonin plus Lu Kaide and Hayo, he should be able to contain even Chio, but looking at the appearance of these people, they are clearly different from the enemy. He even looks a bit suppressed. Don't mention it now. Shinosuke smiled bitterly. I was restrained by a pair of brother puppet masters who restrained me. The two of them are also pretty good, and the puppet master and I don't have much experience in fighting enemies. That's it. As for Lu Feng and Zhao Zhao, the two of them it's nothing serious, it's just that I consumed too much chakra, and I almost recovered after a night's rest. So that's it. Kaide nodded with some understanding. It turned out that he had met San Shinobi's puppet master. These things are not the strongest system at the same level, but they are definitely the most troublesome. None of them. You never know how many disgusting mechanisms a puppet master will install on his puppets. The hidden weapon is sprayed in the mouth, and the poison is quenched on the hidden weapon, not to mention. Some puppets can even be freely disassembled under the control of the puppet master and attack from various unexpected angles finally reassembled. Various stand-in puppets that are exactly the same as the puppet master. A powerful puppet master can even control several puppets. Attack and defense integrated. For example, Chio from San Shinobi can control 10 puppets at the same time to fight. For now, she is still the ninja world's number. One puppet master. The scary thing about puppetry is the traps and hidden weapons that may appear at any time. If you want to deal with the puppet master, knowing the information about the opponent's puppet is basically half the battle. Get some rest early. There may be a tough battle to fight tomorrow. 
After Shinosuke finished speaking, he turned around and fell into a light sleep after a while. Go to sleep, I'm really sleepy. After saying that, the two of them nodded like Feng and then walked to their respective beds. Lu Feng and Zanji both lay down. It could be seen that they were indeed very tired, and soon fell into a light sleep. Huh, you are all asleep, what should I do? Feng looked at the three people who had rested, and was a little dumbfounded. He had just fallen asleep and seemed to be very energetic. I'm afraid I won't be able to sleep at half past ten. I can't give myself ten. Forget it, let me help you keep watch. Let's sleep after Anko and the others come back. Kaide thought to himself as he picked up a small stool and walked out of the tent. After sitting down, he quietly looked at the extremely busy Konoha Shinobi who was coming and going at night. The entire camp was protected by ninjas who kept vigil and patrolled on three levels inside and outside. Within ten minutes, there would be a round of eye roll glances from the Hyuga tribe or an Inazuka tribe member passing by with a big dog. Parasitic insects from the Abarame clan are still floating in the air from time to time. With this sensing lineup, except for black zetsu or time and space ninjutsu, not even a strange mosquito can fly in in the entire ninja world. I have to say that there is a reason why Konoha village is the strongest in the ninja world. The best place and the best resources cultivate the best group of people. The next day, the prepared Shinosuke team stood in front of the open space of the camp, standing there quietly with thousands of ninjas, waiting for orders. Okay, that's the situation. Shikaku leaves behind the command, you go down and get ready, we'll set off right away. At this time, in the commander's tent, Hitaki Sakumo and a group of Jonin were discussing the pre-war meeting and assigning their respective tasks. Just ask them to stand back and get ready for action. After a while, Hitaki Sakumo and Tsunade walked out of the handsome tent and looked at the hundreds of Konoha shinobi in front of them. Pull out the short sword behind you and point it in the direction of the sand shinobi camp. Set off. After speaking, Hitaki Sakumo took the lead to open the way, followed by thousands of ninjas, heading straight for the sand shinobi grand chamber. The river country, this country is sandwiched between the fire country and the wind country, has naturally become the best place to fight. No matter how, 933, fights, it will not affect our side. This is exactly the tragedy of a small country. What Nagato said is not wrong. Great powers go to war with each other for their own, justice, without caring about the lives of others. Not only the kingdom of river, but also the kingdom of Tang and Moon, which are sandwiched between the kingdom of fire and the kingdom of thunder. And the most miserable rain country. It is sandwiched between the kingdom of fire, the kingdom of wind, and the kingdom of earth. Because it rains all year round, it is called the kingdom of rain. The country has been divided for a long time by civil war, and the shinobi village it belongs to is rain shinobi village. The current leader is the legendary ninja Hanzo of the Salamander, known as the Demigod, but even if he is stronger than Hanzo, it does not change the tragic fate of the rain country as a buffer for the Three Kingdoms War, and in the end he can only compromise. The open plains are the best battlefield for a large number of ninjas to fight. After a while, several thousand people followed Hitaki Sakumo to an open plain in the river country. It was the best place for a large number of ninjas to fight, and there was no need to worry about the enemy ambush. After Hitaki Sakumo stopped, the ninjas behind him stood still, and everyone was waiting for the arrival of San Shinobi. Konoha has already deployed 8,000 ninjas on the San Shinobi battlefield, and can only send so many. After all, there is not only one battlefield. Most of the troops have been sent to the Rock Shinobi border and the Cloud Shinobi border to guard the two ninja villages. Mist Shinobi should also pay attention. It is normal that the multi-front combat forces are somewhat stretched. It mainly depends on how the commander fights. After a while, a dense sea of people appeared at the end of the field of vision. At a glance, it was much more than the 4,000 people Konoha brought out this time. It was estimated that there were about 5,000 people. The two sides started a confrontation less than 200 meters away. An old woman and an old man with slender eyebrows walked out of San Shinobi. Behind the two stood the young man who had attacked the Konoha camp at night last time and controlled Sans to fight against Jiraiya. As for Konoha's side, there are Hitaki Sakumo and Tsunade, and behind them are the three, Ino Shika Cho. Hitaki Sakumo, you Konoha maliciously assassinated R, 
third case cage, causing the case cage to disappear. You wantonly provoked a war, aren't you Konoha prepared to give a sand shinobi an explanation? Ebizo stepped forward and spoke while using chakra, causing thousands of ninjas to hear his voice. Sunagakar's side immediately became agitated, and all kinds of insults were heard. Konoha was not to be outdone. The two parties added up to nearly 10,000 people, and they began to curse like a super large vegetable market. Ridiculous. Hitaki Sakumo stepped forward and raised his hand to signal Konoha Shinobi to silence, while Chio also waved to signal San Shinobi to silence. You just say we did it when third case cage went missing, and you're just yelling here without any evidence. As soon as Hitaki Sakumo finished speaking, Tsunade took over. Your third case cage didn't come out of Sunagakar, did he? Did he disappear quietly within the range of Sunagakar? The so-called strongest case cage is nothing more than that. Snort. As soon as Tsunade finished speaking, Chio interrupted Tsunade with an ugly expression. Konoha's Tsunade Haim is really sharp-tongued, but Konoha would be a little too contemptuous of me, San Shinobi, by sending you two here. Hitaki Sakumo, today you will be responsible for what you have done. As for whether the third case cage was done by Konoha or not, it no longer matters. The war has already begun, and it cannot be solved with a few words or a piece of paper. Both sides must pay a bloody price for this. Kill. Accompanied by the loud shouts of killing, two torrents of ninjas collided together, killing countless people in an instant. You fool of Konoha, suffer death. HMPH, you guys who are playing in the sand, go back to the desert. Amidst the roars, the genin fought in a chaotic group, while the janin each found their own opponent. Chiyo summoned the Ten Konoha Shinobi, and anyone who came close to Chiyo's Konoha Shinobi was killed by the Ten Puppets in a matter of seconds. Hitaki Sakumo, on his side, waved the White Fang short sword and rushed towards Chiyo quickly. All the San Shinobi who blocked his progress along the way were decapitated with one knife, leaving no intact corpses. When Chiyo and Hitaki Sakumo were entangled and fighting fiercely, Tsunade also took action. Her goal was very clear, it was the young man who could use the golden sand. Ebizo was entangled by Ino Shika Cho, and the high-level combat power of the two parties was in full swing for a while. Even Shinosuke separated from Kaide and others and faced off against the two puppet masters. As for the morning, when I saw a special Jonin, my eyes lit up, so I went up and stabbed him. Now only Feng and Lu Yan are left in Jenin to observe the situation while killing. Although San Shinobi has a numerical advantage, the quality of the leaves makes up for a certain quantitative gap. So for now it looks like they are evenly matched. Hey, isn't this the little brother from yesterday? There is no one in Konoha village, so I sent you brats to die. A mocking female voice came. After hearing this voice, Feng didn't react at all, but Lu Yan's expression changed. He pulled Feng up, turned around and backed away, and prepared for a counterattack. What greeted the two of them was a beautiful woman with 4.4-inch dark green hair tied into a bun, with yellow hair hanging down from both sides of her face. Wearing a black tube top, revealing a large amount of white on her back. A white bandage was wrapped around his waist. Tall and tall, with an oval face, he was looking at the two of them with a smile. For some reason, Feng always felt that the beautiful woman in front of him looked familiar. HMPH, you are not ashamed of your words. I don't know who is going to die. Tell me your name. I, Uchiha Lu Yan, will not kill unknown people. Lu Yan immediately retorted, who wouldn't say harsh words. Besides, he can't beat this woman alone, and Feng's words, he may not be able to fight. I said, do you think you can compete with me by finding a friend? As for my name, it doesn't hurt to tell you. The beauty Sakura opposite her opened her lips lightly. Yi Kang. Um. Feng's eyes were shocked, and he turned to look at Lu Yan beside him. He saw that the latter's whole body tensed up, and while looking at Yi Kang in front of him, he said in the voice of only two people. This woman is the owner of the bloodline limit. Be careful not to be hit by her attacks, otherwise your whole body will become dehydrated quickly. You will lose your ability to fight in a moment. Lu Yan stared at Sharingan and looked at Yi Kang opposite him solemnly. Yesterday he underestimated the enemy and was almost seriously injured by Scorch style. Fortunately, there was morning support nearby, otherwise the consequences would be disastrous. 
A drop of cold sweat ran down Kaide's head. With this outfit, this name, and this unique bloodline limit, there was no other person in the entire ninja world. The hero of San Shinobi, Scorch Style. During his lifetime, he was a Jonin from Sunagakar who mastered the bloodline limited, Scorch Style, skillfully. He made great contributions to Sunagakar in the war and was called the, Hero of San Shinobi. But it is a pity that Yakuru was deceived by 4th Case Cage and many San Shinobi executives into Mist Shinobi in the name of performing 25 secret missions, and was unexpectedly attacked and killed. Became a victim of the political deals of major powers. It is sad that a generation of heroes has come to an end. If she hadn't died, 5th Case Cage would have been her. The current Yi Kang is slightly greener than in the original work. His strength probably hasn't reached cage level yet, but it shouldn't be far away. It's troublesome. Stop talking nonsense, let's see the real deal. Yi Kang's eyes across from him suddenly became sharp, and he formed seals with his hands while speaking. Yi Kang raised his hands, and two fireballs the size of rubber balls hung above his palms and continued to burn. After flying around Yi Kang twice, Didi Lu Lu fiercely attacked the two of them. Water style water barrier. Feng quickly formed seals with his hands, and before the fireball arrived, he stirred up the chakra, and a stream of water rose out of the air, like a bowl falling upside down, firmly protecting the two of them. The two collided with a sizzling sound, but the two did not relax, because the two fireballs had evaporated most of the surface of the water barrier in the blink of an eye. It won't take a moment to break through the defense. What a strong attack power. The two looked at each other, nodded and then suddenly ran away to both sides. The fireball that broke through the defense had no time to turn before it hit the ground and exploded into two small craters. There was still a trace of steam steaming around the crater. You have to pay the price for looking down on people. The two people rushed to Yi Kang from the left and right sides, and the Kanai stabbed Yi Kang's vitals. Huh, let's try it. Yi Kang snorted coldly and made seals with both hands. The two people's expressions immediately changed. Four or five fireballs that were exactly the same as before appeared around the three people, spinning in the air for a moment and then suddenly attacked them. The two of them could only withdraw their attacks and retreat. If they continued, even if they seriously injured Yi Kang, they would not have time to avoid Scorch style. Being seriously injured on the battlefield is no joke. Maybe the shuriken kanai thrown by the ninjas from both sides could kill the seriously wounded. What's wrong, this won't work anymore, keep going. Yi Kang's mocking words did not affect the two of them. Feng secretly made a gesture to Lu Yan, who immediately understood. He took two steps forward and then jumped into the air, throwing several shurikens while quickly forming seals with his hands. Mouth slightly open. Fire style impatience claw red. A stream of flames spurted out from Lu Yan's mouth, and in the blink of an eye he caught up with the shuriken flying in the air, adding a layer of flame to the shuriken. The scorching high temperature did not deform the shuriken, but instead greatly increased the lethality of the shuriken. Little tricks. Yi Kang clasped his hands together, and the surrounding fireballs quickly rotated and merged together. As they expanded rapidly, the temperature also increased rapidly. The surrounding ninjas had already vacated a space here. This is also one of the few independent battlefields on the battlefield. After Yi Kang finished accumulating his energy, he let out a low cry, and a huge fireball flew out at Lu Yan in the air. It swallowed up Lu Yan's ninjutsu in an instant, and flew straight to Lu Yan, who was falling quickly, under the control of Yi Kang's chakra. Water Style Water Wave the moment before Lu Yan was swallowed by the fireball, a huge waterspout rose into the sky from below. Between Lu Yan and Huo Chu. In an instant, the great fireball collided with the waterspout. The fireball began to slowly shrink, and the temperature of the water flow increased linearly. Although the waterspout was smaller in size, the high temperature far exceeded the boiling point, turning it into a rotating boiling waterspout. The roll was smashed down in the air under Feng's control. Let me use your moves to heat up some water. Feng grinned at Yi Kang, who was slightly stunned across from him. The torrent of boiling water rushed towards Yi Kang. Under the cover of the water flow, Lu Yan, who landed on the ground, disappeared instantly and disappeared without a trace. The strength is pretty good, but it's not enough. Although Yi Kang was a little stunned, the movements of his hands were not slow. After completing the seal, take a deep breath 
puff up your hands, and then spurt them out fiercely. Wind style vacuum dayama. A huge air bomb quickly formed in the air, burst out suddenly, and suddenly collided with the boiling water waterfall that was rushing so close. Boom. A huge explosion sounded, and the air bomb that rushed into the center of the water flow suddenly exploded. The speed of the boiling water slowed down, and then exploded with a bang. The sky was full of boiling water flying in all directions on the battlefield, the San Shinobi and Konoha Shinobi who were fighting suddenly found that it seemed, raining. But the rain seemed to be hot. Hiss, it's so hot. Holy crap, who used this kind of move that hurts both sides. 690 A small half of the battlefield was affected by the battle between the two, which even diverted some of the attention of the cage level experts who were fighting in the distance. Scorch style. It seems you San Shinobi still have some geniuses. Hitaki Sakumo slashed out his sword and forced the two puppets back while looking at Kaide Yekora in the distance and said. HMPH, we San Shinobi are no less talented than you Konoha. That brat should also be a genius in your Konoha. It's a pity that he will turn into a mummy soon. While controlling the puppet attack, Chio focused part of his attention on observing the movements on the battlefield. HMPH, you should worry more about yourself. Hitaki Sakumo stopped talking, and the white fang wave in his hand was a little faster. The suppressed Chio had no time to use the puppet ability. Hateful. Chio Han gritted his teeth. Although the puppet master's combat effectiveness would not decline much as he got older, Hitaki Sakumo was in his prime, and in several battles with her, he gradually figured out part of the Ten Chikamatsu ability. He didn't even give her a chance to activate her secret puppet skills. Although Chio doesn't want to admit it, the gap between San Shinobi and Konoha is indeed not the smallest bit. If all the masters in Konoha showed up, San Shinobi wouldn't be able to hold on for even a week and would be killed. 8. Luo Sha, who is waving his hands to control the placer gold, noticed the battlefield on the other side of Yi Kang and showed some dissatisfaction in his eyes. As one of the few high-end combat power and bloodline limited owners of San Shinobi, he actually fought with a child for such a long time without killing him. That's outrageous. HMPH, boy, you dare to be distracted when fighting with me, watch your moves. A sharp shout brought Luo Sha back to his senses, but he didn't notice that Tsunade had broken through Sha Jin's defense and rushed forward with ten fists raised high. Smash it down quickly. Um, Rasa hurriedly mobilized the nearby placer gold to rush towards Tsunade, and at the same time wrapped himself in placer gold for defense. But this didn't seem to be of any use. Tsunade's fist shattered the layers of sand gold and finally hit the ground suddenly. Strange power explodes. The ground started from Tsunade's fist, and a huge impact poured into the ground. In an instant, all the ground within 5 meters began to crack and sink. Boom. A muffled sound came from the ground, and then the earth suddenly exploded. Earth and rocks flew everywhere, and smoke and dust rose everywhere. The placer gold of Luo Sha burst out instantly, and the impact caused the gold placer figurines wrapped in Luo Sha to fly far away. The faces of the San Shinobi and Konoha Shinobi who were fighting all around all turned pale, and they collectively moved a few meters to the side before continuing to fight. Seems very understanding. Easy -zies. Luo Sha opened the sand gold defense, came out and raised his hand to cover the corner of his mouth. A trace of bloodline flows down inside. Rasa gasped while looking at Tsunade who was slowly getting up. There was a look of horror in his eyes. Sure enough, he is worthy of being the legendary Sanin. Whether it is Jiraiya last time or Tsunade now, they are both terrifyingly strong. Luo Sha moved his eyes to the left and saw Chio who was gradually being suppressed and Ebizo who was on par with Inoshika Cho, over there, and felt helpless in her heart. TCH, I actually managed to hold on, come again. Tsunade saw Luo Sha coming out of the sand gold defense in the distance, raised his eyebrows, raised his legs and rushed towards the doctor. HMPH, don't be too proud, let me show you the power of magnet style. Luo Sha looked at Tsunade who rushed forward and had no time to care about anything else. With a wave of his hands, the placer gold in the desert was gathered together by him again and rolled towards Tsunade. On Feng's side, Yi Kang finally began to look at the two of them, and the fireball summoned by his hands began to merge and grow in size at a speed visible to the naked eye. 
You have good strength, but you should also marry. Before Yi Kang could finish speaking, a sudden change occurred. Lu Yan, who disappeared in front, suddenly appeared and came to Yi Kang's side. Yi Kang was calm and unhurried, obviously prepared for it. With both hands separated, the fireball also split into two and flew towards Lu Yan. Flying towards Kaide who was approaching rapidly. Let you see the power of the Uchiha clan. Lu Yan's eyes closed and opened, and the blood-red whites of his eyes combined with the black Magatama inside them looked particularly eerie. From Sharingan's perspective, the speed of the fireball flying in the air slowed down by more than half. Lu Yan twisted his body and passed by the scorch-style fireball. The twinge of pain caused by the fleeting high temperature made him more awake. The kanai in his hand stabbed Yi Kang directly. The kanai was successfully inserted into Yi Kang's chest, but Lu Yan's expression was a little ugly. He saw Yi Kang in front of him suddenly exploded, and a cloud of white mist dissipated into the air. Shadow Clone Kaide did not choose to use ninjutsu when facing the flying fireball. Instead, he took out a kanai from his ninja tool bag and stabbed it at the fireball. The paper tied behind the kanai made a sound in the air. The kanai accurately hit the fireball and was swallowed up by the fireball in an instant, turning into a pool of molten iron. However, the detonating charm flying in the wind behind it emitted a white light, and then exploded with a bang. Black smoke billowed forward, and the three of them lost sight of each other. Kaide did not dodge, but rushed directly into the black mist, took out three shurikens and shot them somewhere. After a while, the sound of kanai knocking down shurikens was heard over there. Lu Yan, who heard the sound, immediately formed seals with his hands quickly and mobilized chakra in the direction of the sound. Fire Style Dragon Fire Technique Several flame dragons formed in an instant, rushing into the black smoke one after another. As the hot flames advanced, they cleared the black smoke on the field, and it was revealed that the end of the attack was Yi Kang. Hateful. Yi Kang gritted his silver teeth, and while retracting the kanai, his hands gathered several fireballs again, and bombarded the flame dragon head that was coming towards him. Boom. Lu Yan's attack was intercepted in the sky. The two flame attacks collided and exploded in the air. The huge aftermath caused Yi Kang, who was approaching, to leap up in a hurry. Before she could land, Lu Yan, who had bypassed the aftermath, rushed to her feet. Yi Kang immediately prepared to fire a fireball to attack so that he could land safely. Unexpectedly, Lu Yan was not prepared to fight him head on. Instead, he raised his head and looked at Yi Kang for a moment when Yi Kang was about to land. Yi Kang immediately felt that he was in a trance, but it didn't last for less than a moment. She came back to her senses in seconds. What puzzled her was that Lu Yan didn't take advantage of the situation to attack when she lost consciousness just now, but turned around and ran away, as if there was some savage beast chasing behind. Suddenly, Yi Kang's expression changed and he turned to look to the side. He saw Feng leaping into the air and raising his right foot high. As soon as Yi Kang landed, he saw Feng falling quickly. Maybe it was the woman's sixth sense that was crazy to him. Yi Kang warned, but Yi Kang did not dare to neglect and quickly formed seals with his hands. At this moment, Feng's right foot also slammed down. God keeps his feet. It was a familiar scene again. The shattered earth, splashing earth and rocks, and the terrifying aftermath of sand and dust continued to spread outwards. The surrounding ninjas retreated with their eyes wide open, looked back and forth between the battlefield of Tsunade Rasa and here. Even the battlefield on Chio and Hitaki Sakumo's side stagnated slightly, and then they were fighting again. The two of them looked at the flying smoke and dust over there, with a hint of surprise in their eyes, but their moods were completely different. This fighting method. Dot why does it look so familiar? While controlling the puppet, Chio glanced back and forth at the other two battlefields with his peripheral vision. She seemed to understand a little and her face turned gloomy again. It seemed that she was in trouble. Weird strength, these two children are so good. Hitaki Sakumo felt relieved. After all, the two of them stopped Yi Kang, one of the top masters of San Shinobi. The Konoha Shinobi player does not have an advantage on the field. If Yi Kang is left alone, the battle situation will tilt towards San Shinobi, and it may even lead to this war. Defeated. Well done, you little brat. A smile appeared on Tsunade's lips as he attacked. Kaide as a disciple was so dazzling. And he, as a teacher, also had a bright face. 
The suppressed opponent, Luo Sha, was miserable for a while. How can I bother to pay attention to other places? Cough 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 wound. In the abandoned pit, Yi Kang stood up from a dilapidated earth wall, breathing heavily. At the last moment, she successfully used the earth flow wall to defend herself, and it helped her block most of the impact. However, because the distance was too close, he was knocked to the ground by the huge impact, and bursts of pain came from his internal organs. It seemed that his internal organs were injured. Boy, who are you Tsunade Haim? Yi Kang gritted his teeth and looked at Feng not far away. The identical fighting style subconsciously connected the two of them. Ah, she is mine. Feng touched his nose, then glanced at Tsunade who was fighting fiercely in the distance, with a faint smile on his lips. Teacher. At this moment, Yi Kang began to look squarely at the two young men in front of him. She stood up, covered her wound and spoke at the same time. Hey, you two, sign up. Lu Yan returned to Feng, and the two of them looked at Yi Kang and spoke one after another. Uchiha Lu Yan. Uchiha Kaide. I got it. Yi Kang's eyes became sharp and he raised his hands above his head. The air waves stirred up by the chakra blew slightly and moved the corners of her clothes. A fireball hung above Yi Kang's head, with his hands on both sides. Continuously transfer the scorch style chakra from the palm to the fireball. The fireball began to expand continuously, from the size of a football to the size of a basketball in the blink of an eye, and it continued to grow steadily, and the temperature also increased in a straight line. Feng looked at Yi Kang who was charging up his ultimate move crazily across from him, then turned to look at Lu Yan with a solemn expression. Feng Ji, do your best, otherwise I'm afraid you'll end up here today. Good. Lu Yan didn't hesitate. After nodding in response to Feng, he began to form seals with his hands. Feng closed his eyes, and when he opened them again, traces of purple thunder and lightning lines appeared on both sides of his eyes, and Feng's left eye suddenly turned into a Magatama Sharingan. Immortal facial makeup. Next, go all out. Yi Kang, who had finished charging up, let out a low shout. The fireball above his head had stopped growing, but the temperature around him had also reached a terrifying level. Even the two sides fighting in the distance felt a trace of heat. They all turned their attention to the battlefield where the three of them were fighting. Yi Kang launched the fireball, and from a distance it looked like the sun was falling and crashed into the two of them. Even before the visit, the two of them felt a huge sense of oppression. Sage Art Lightning Style Heavenly Thunder Technique Maple looked at the giant great fireball that was crushing him not far away. The mortal magic chakra surged in the body, and Feng formed seals with both hands, and then countless thunder and lightning surrounded Feng. The number of thunder and lightning became more and more, and soon turned into dense lightning threads, forming a huge electric drill-like thunder and lightning on Feng's left hand. The attack looked like a Chidori Promax. Lu Yan next to him did not watch. He formed a seal in his hand and a huge flame instantly attached to Feng's thunder-breaking technique. After an instant, two powerful attacks met together. The powerful impact penetrated Yi Kang's attack, and the fireball exploded. The splashing flames and the huge shock wave successfully attracted everyone's attention. The ninjas on both sides fighting nearby retreated again and again. The two parties only focused on avoiding the aftermath and retreating. For a while, the nearby battlefield seemed a bit chaotic. The imagined scene of three people being swallowed up by the explosion flames did not appear. Lu Yan did not consume too much chakra because he was assisting Feng. The seals had been completed long before the aftermath. The water barrier rose from the ground, protecting the two of them from 360 degrees without blind spots. Although Feng was unable to continue using ninjutsu for a while, he still activated the chakra in his body and put his left hand on Lu Yan's back to help him share some of the pressure. After the roar, the topography here was completely changed, and a huge pothole appeared. There was a trace of steam rising from the hot rocks inside. Lu Yan's hands were shaking slightly as he cancelled the chakra. Even if Feng helped share some of the pressure, most of the pressure was still on his side. In order to withstand the aftermath of this big explosion, Lu Yan consumed 20% of the chakra in his body. Now the amount of chakra in his body is less than 30% of what it was in its heyday. Feng was not much better, the immortal facial makeup disappeared, and the chakra consumption was far worse than Lu Yan. 
Although the S-level ninjutsu activated by Senjutsu Chakra is amazingly powerful, it is also terribly draining. Now only a thin layer of chakra remains in Maple's body. As for Yi Kang, she started to retreat back before the two attacks collided. When the aftermath of the explosion came, CFCD, she had already retreated to the periphery and resisted the aftermath of the explosion without any effort. Cage level masters who were fighting fiercely in several other battlefields stopped after seeing the situation here. Seeing that the senior officials stopped, the ninjas from both sides gradually stopped fighting and retreated to their pre battle positions, began to confront each other. How's it going, Fung? Are you okay? The first person to come to the two of them was Hitaki Sakumo. He held the short sword in his right hand and his expression remained unchanged after a high intensity battle. At this time, he looked at Fung with a trace of worry in his eyes, asked with concern. Hey, I'm fine, Uncle Shuamao, I'm just a little exhausted. Kaide leaned on Lu Yan and grinned at Hitaki Sakumo. Fung, Lu Yan, are you two okay? Several sounds broke through the air, and in the blink of an eye Tsunade, Inoshika Cho, Shinosuke and others came closer. Shinosuke looked at the pale two people and asked eagerly. It's okay, Captain. The two nodded to Shinosuke to indicate that they were fine. As soon as he finished speaking, Fung received a punch on the head. Ah, asshole, don't you know what it means when your physical strength and chakra are exhausted on the battlefield? Do you still want me to teach you these things? Veins popped up on Tsunade's forehead, and he looked at Kaide who was grinning in pain. There was a hint of worry in his angry tone. Teacher, I was wrong, and I know the consequences, but because. Fung said in a timid tone while protecting the top of his head. Huh, why? Tsunade had a puzzled look on his face, and even a group of senior executives nearby looked at Kaide curiously, waiting for the next part of his sentence. Because. Dot the atmosphere has been set so well, it seems unreasonable not to use a big move together. Lu Yan, who was supporting Feng next to him, had a twitching look on his face and turned his head away from looking at Feng's face that needed a beating. As for Hitaki Sakumo and others next to them, they had long been shocked by Kaide's words. Tsunade's beautiful eyes widened, and the fist he had just put down was raised high again, and a roar was deafening in the quiet battlefield. TX Yi Kang, what are you doing? You are entangled by two children. Is this how you use your scorch style? On San Shinobi's side, Luo Sha looked at Yi Kang dissatisfied and made two accusations at the same time. Obviously, in his opinion, Yi Kang was entangled by two brats, causing the battle to reach a stalemate. Yi Kang is mainly responsible for the defeat of San Shinobi in the team battle this time. Yi Kang didn't argue with Luo Sha but looked quietly in the direction of Konoha, not knowing what he was thinking. Okay, just say a few words. Those two boys are pretty good. It's not Yi Kang's fault. Sister, look at this. Fortunately, Ebizo stood up and said a few words for Yi Kang and pushed Luo Sha down. Then Ebizo turned to look at his sister, waiting for her instructions. But Chio fell into silence. Retreat. Chio took a deep look at Feng opposite him, left a few words, and then turned around and left. Yes, by three inches. Even though the three of them had all their doubts, they did not question him on the spot, but quickly conveyed the order. After receiving the order, San Shinobi quickly adjusted his formation and turned around to leave. Back in Konoha, Kaide, who had taken two punches from Tsunade, was already lying on Lu Yan's body, and his air was coming out more than he was taking in. It felt like his concussion had been knocked out by his hand. As for the furious Tsunade, he was stopped by everyone, otherwise Feng would be in trouble today. Huh, San Shinobi retreated. The retreating San Shinobi attracted the attention of the Konoha Shinobi. All the surviving Konoha Shinobi wiped away cold sweat. It felt so good to be alive. Cure the team and return to the camp first. Hitaki Sakumo gave an order, and the Konoha Shinobi began to organize their cues and headed towards the Konoha camp. Only a few hundred corpses were left on this battlefield forever. There may be survivors among them, but whether they can survive until the search and rescue team arrives is another matter. Is it wrong? Wrong. What's wrong? Have no idea. You. Maiko Kana was furious for a moment. As the head of the medical department, she had been worried about Feng's safety in the logistics department. When she saw Kaide being carried back by Lu Yan, Maiko Kana almost died of panic. 
Later, she said that Feng's son was on the battlefield. The operation was so cool that she immediately started the preaching mode when she was angry. Ahem, cough, cough, Aunt Maiko, don't be angry. I was wrong, I was wrong, I shouldn't have made irrational actions on the battlefield. I will reflect on it. Seeing that Kana Maiko was really angry, Kaide immediately stopped smiling and apologized quickly. After hearing Kaide's apology, Kana Maiko's face improved a little, but she still couldn't help but say a few words to Kaide. What can Feng do? He can only bite the bullet and listen to his parents' instructions. After finishing speaking, Kana Maiko looked at Kaide sitting cross-legged on the hospital bed and said angrily. Since you have nothing to do, just leave quickly. It is a waste of medical resources. The beds are very tight. Okay, I'll go first, Aunt Maiko. Feng's eyes lit up, his hands and feet were neatly dressed, he said hello to Kana Maiko and ran away. Maiko Kana shook her head helplessly. This kid has become so out of control in just two years after following Tsunade. Ah, I really miss the well-behaved and sensible Kaide in the past. Feng, who didn't know what Kana Maiko was going through, rubbed his head and walked out of the medical camp. After a small battle, the tents and beds in the medical camp were already crowded. Maple just consumes too much chakra and there is no need to waste bed resources. Oh, and a slight concussion, by the way. Hem. Feng, how is your injury? A voice interrupted Kaide's thoughts. Kaide looked up and saw that it was Nara Shikaku. Shikaku Senpei. Kaide smiled and said hello to Nara Shikaku, and the two chatted while walking. I'm fine. Aunt Maiko told me to just sleep and I'll be fine. Yeah, that's good. Shikaku patted Kaide on the shoulder with appreciation. You and the Uchiha boy were able to hold back San Shinobi's bloodline limited powerhouse. Well done. Sukumo Senpei said, I'll give you two guys a credit first. He he he, how can this be so embarrassing? Lu Ju couldn't help but laugh when he looked at Feng, who was refusing but with a smile on his face. Why does his temperament look nothing like Tsunade-sama? People who don't know may think that this kid is Jiraiya's disciple. You go back and have a good rest. I have to attend a meeting. Okay, Senior Shikaku, walk slowly. After saying goodbye to Shikaku, Kaide hummed a tune and walked towards the tent. Konoha Village. Hokage Office. Ha 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 ha. Serutobi Hiruzen's laughter was endless, and even the secretly guarding Anbu was curious about what Hokage was laughing at. Hokage-sama, the Uchiha clan leader has arrived. Anbu brought a majestic-looking man to Hokage's office and half knelt on the ground. Well, thank you for your hard work, please step aside. Yes. After Anbu retired, Uchiha Fugaku stood in front of the desk and saluted Serutobi Hiruzen. Lord Hokage, why did you call me here? Fugaku is here, take a look at this first. Serutobi Hiruzen smiled and pushed a document on the desk to Fugaku, which was the latest intelligence from the front line. Yes. After Uchiha Fugaku finished speaking, he picked up the document and began to read it carefully. After a while, Uchiha Fugaku put down the document. Said to Serutobi Hiruzen with a hint of joy on his face. The San Shinobi battlefield is starting to gain the upper hand little by little. It seems that the defense line there has stabilized. It's gratifying. Yeah, but that's not what surprises me the most. Serutobi Hiruzen took a puff of cigarette with a smile, exhaled slowly and then continued. According to Sakumo Tsunade Shikaku and others, when we were short of high-end combat power, the two children Kaide and Lu Yan actually briefly held back San Shinobi's Scorch-style ninja Yekora. This also led to the frontline battlefield not falling. One of the reasons for the disadvantage. Fugaku, these kids surprised us so much that I decided to give each of them a credit. What do you think? Master Hokage is wise. As the future of Konoha, these children should be given appropriate encouragement. Fugaku said with a smile. These two teenagers are all geniuses of his Uchiha clan. Although Kaide was expelled from his ancestral home by the elders of the older generation, no matter what, Uchiha won this time. Lu Yan naturally doesn't need to say anything. As for Feng, Fugaku, after all, he is a child of your Uchiha clan. Although his life experience goes against the clan rules, I still hope that you, the Uchiha clan, can discuss it. After all, Feng also opened the sharingan of 
After taking a puff of cigarette, Sarutobi Hirazan looked at Uchiha Fugaku with deep eyes. Yes, Feng's strength and character are already impeccable. Moreover, he is a child of Shanjo, the clan brother he once loved very much. Don't worry, Hokage-sama. With Kaide's record this time, I believe I have greater confidence in persuading the seniors in the clan. Well, Feng is a good boy. After a moment of silence, Uchiha Fugaku spoke first. Master Hokage is busy with work, and the security team also has some matters to deal with, so I will take my leave first. Zero. Okay, then go and get busy. Yes. After Uchiha Fugaku left, Sarutobi Hirazan, who was sitting in the office, put down his pipe with a trace of reminiscence in his eyes. Homura, Kaharu, Kaifeng, Danzo, and Kagami. Sarutobi Hirazan walked to the window and looked into the distance. Uchiha. I hope you two can keep this bond going forward. The figures of Kaide and Lu Yan appeared in Sarutobi Hirazan's mind, and Jing immediately walked to the desk and sat down. Start reviewing the documents that are several meters high. In the Uchiha tribe, Uchiha Fugaku and Uchiha Yusuke walked side by side as they returned home from get off work. Both of them were smiling and seemed to be in a good mood. Ha ha ha, Yusuke, this time Lu Yan and Feng have really made our Uchiha clan proud. When they come back, they can make an exception and let him learn an advanced Uchiha ninjutsu as a reward. I thank the clan leader on behalf of Lu Yan and Feng. As Uchiha Yusuk thanked him, his mood became better and better. Uchiha's high-level ninjutsu is not comparable to the rubbish A-level ninjutsu outside. As the largest family in the ninja world, Uchiha's background is not like that of Sarutobi. The ambition is comparable to that of a small clan like this. Even if he is the elder of the Uchiha clan, he has only a handful of opportunities to learn these ninjutsu. His son can learn Uchiha's ninjutsu inheritance at a young age, which is not a bit better than him, Lousy. When thinking of Kaide, Uchiha Yusuke hesitated, but still spoke. Just as Yusuke was about to continue speaking, Uchiha Fugaku interrupted Uchiha Yusuke. Don't worry, Feng's record has been spread to the ears of the older generation of elders. This time, they are not so stubborn. Don't worry, I will try my best, just think it is for Shanjo. Just think of it as atonement for your cowardice back then, 10,000. By the way, remember to send a message to Lu Yan and ask him to be careful on the battlefield. I will also apply to Lord Hokage to arrange for Yi and Shinichi to join the next batch of teams participating in the battle. Set off to the San Shinobi battlefield to protect Lu Yan and Feng for safety, this is all we can do. Uchiha Fugaku's expression became complicated. As the clan leaders and elders of Uchiha, they could not easily end without Hokage's orders. They could only use this method to protect their own people. Yes, thank you very much, Patriarch. Uchiha Yusuke nodded to express his gratitude. He was also grateful for the arrangement of the clan leader. After all, although he was the great elder of Uchiha, his right to speak in front of Hokage was still weaker than that of Uchiha Fugaku. This time Uchiha Fu personally arranged for two Janin to protect his son, and his son's safety can also be protected. Really, how long have we known each other? Do you still need to say thank you to me? Uchiha Fugaku laughed and cursed. At this time, the two of them also walked to the door of Yusuke's house. Just when Uchiha Yusuke was about to ask Uchiha Fugaku to go in and sit for a while. Uchiha Fugaku waved goodbye and declined Uchiha Yusuke's invitation, indicating that he would not go in. After returning home, Fugaku sat at the table. After taking a sip of hot tea, he turned his attention to Itachi, who was already two years old and walking back and forth at home. His eyes were full of love for his son and expectations for his future. What's wrong? Master Hokage asked you to come over, are you okay? At this time, Uchiha Makoto walked out of the kitchen, carrying a plate of desserts and walked slowly to the table and sat down on his knees. While placing the desserts, he looked at his husband with a trace of concern in his tone. Ah, it's nothing. The two children, Lu Yan and Feng, made meritorious service on the battlefield, so Lord Sarutobi Hirazan asked me to go over and have a look, and credit the two children with merit. A smile appeared on Uchiha Fugaku's lips. After all, the last time he was so happy was when Itachi called them parents. Huh, are those two kids so powerful now? 
Speaking of which, these kids were about the same age as us when they went to fight on the battlefield. They were all eight or nine years old, but we are far behind them. Uchiha Makoto said with some emotion, after all, when they were as old as Lu Yangfeng, although they also went to the battlefield, as mid Genin at that time, their main job was to transport supplies and patrol and other tasks that were not particularly dangerous. Although they also participated he has survived a large-scale battle, and his strength is considered top-notch among his peers, but it is not enough compared to a true genius. On the top is Konoha's White Fang who became famous in World War II, and on the bottom is Sanin the bloody battle demigod. And the strength of most of their generation during World War II did not reach the level of fame. Even a small number of people like Minato and Fugaku who reached this level did not get their own exclusive accounts due to time constraints. Kakashi, Kaide, Luyan, and Shisui. These four children are the most talented children I have ever seen. Even we were inferior to them when we were young. It is a pity that there is too little time left for them. Although they have shown strong talents and strength far beyond their peers at a young age, but the war is still too early for them. I am going to arrange for Yi and Shinichi to go to the San Shinobi battlefield so that we can rest assured. Uchiha Makoto nodded and looked at Fugaku worriedly. That kid Fung. Don't worry, we don't need to worry about that child. The teachers are over there, so it would be superfluous for us to do that. Uchiha Fugaku also understands his wife's worries. Over the years, his accompaniment Izuku has brought Kaide to Fugaku's house from time to time to take Itachi out to play. Moreover, although Kaide's father was kicked out of the Uchiha clan, his prestige in the Uchiha clan is still very high. The genius of the previous generation, coupled with Shanjo's amiability, and Kaide himself is very friendly to others just like his father. Although Kaide does not live in the Uchiha clan, she is still very popular when she comes to the Uchiha clan. In addition, he is the only disciple of Tsunade, one of the Sanin, and he has a very strong backing. In terms of strength, Kaide has defeated Kakashi, the top genius in Konoha, and possesses the bloodline limit of self-development. Although he has been expelled from the clan, based on this, how could Uchiha's senior management turn away such a genius unless their brains were eaten by Akamaru? Fung, brother, Itachi, who heard the two chatting, walked up to Makoto, patted Makoto's arm, and talked about Kaide intermittently. This kid really likes Fung. Fugaku and Makoto looked at each other and smiled. You must know that Itachi called mom when he first learned to speak, but the second one he called was not Fugaku, but stumblingly talking about Kaide. It made Fugaku's face darken for several days. Good things never go out, but bad things spread thousands of miles, because at that time Minato and Kashina came to Fugaku's house as guests. I witnessed Itachi wandering up to Kaide, whispering and slapping Kaide on the face. Kashina who burst out laughing on the spot, shared the news with a group of ladies after she returned home, and then spread the word, and Fugaku was laughed at in the Janin circle for two days. Even Sarutobi Hirazan once teased him about it. Now Makoto and Kashina sometimes find it extremely funny when they talk. However, no one took this to make fun of Fugaku. After all, as the leader of the Uchiha clan, his strength was not unrivaled in Konoha, but he also had few rivals. Having said that, San Shinobi has taken the lead in declaring war on Konoha, leaving Mist Shinobi temporarily unused. According to some intelligence coming back from the front lines, Cloud Shinobi and Rock Shinobi have begun to continuously station troops on the border. There are not many free days. Both of them fell into silence. Now because the other three villages have not declared war yet and are just stationing troops, 5.2 Konoha cannot take the first action and affect the whole body. If today, whether it is Rock Shinobi or Cloud Shinobi, take the first action, in addition the two villages will have an excuse to start a war. When the four major villages come to an end, even Konoha will not be able to bear it. Although they are passive now, the good thing is that the other major villages are not monolithic, and they will also attack each other. So sticking to the status quo is a helpless move. Fugaku's analysis was correct. One month after the war between San Shinobi and Konoha, Serutobi Hirazan received intelligence and looked at San Shinobi who was at a disadvantage. The unbearable Rock Shinobi, led by 3rd Suchikage Onoki, also officially declared war on Konoha. Fortunately, Konoha was prepared this time and was not caught off guard like San Shinobi. 
With Jiraiya as the commander-in-chief, he led thousands of troops to kick off the Rock Shinobi War. Sand Shinobi Battlefield Wind-style Great Breakthrough Feng took a deep breath, and the wind-style chakra gathered in his throat and spit it out fiercely. A strong wind appeared and hit the opposite side. Fire-style extinguishes the fire. Lu Yan, who was standing aside, completed the fire-style chakra after completing the seal. His elbows were extended, the index fingers of his hands faced each other to form a triangle, and he finished the noon seal. A line of fire erupted, and the wind helped the fire area. With the blessing of wind style, the flame range rapidly expanded, covering a small half of the battlefield, and at the same time, the blazing flame struck towards the opposite side. It will burn everything it touches. Ninjutsu is so powerful. Scorch style is too steamy to kill. Yi Kang did not panic when facing the sea of fire. While forming seals with her hands, dozens of fireballs were born behind her. They floated up and down while the temperature nearby continued to rise. Then under the control of Yi Kang Chakra, it began to fuse quickly, and after a while it merged into a pure giant great fireball. Yi Kang's left hand was dragged under the fireball, and after Chakra's instigation, he suddenly threw it out. The scorching fireball rushed into the sea of fire. This was a collision between flames. The sea of fire pressed by the fireball continued to separate to both sides, and the fireball also began to shrink under the continuous erosion of the sea of fire. The scorching high temperature caused the nearby crowd to withdraw together again. A few meters away, I was also complaining secretly in my heart. The battles between these bosses are really about getting hurt and dying when you touch them. Most of the corpses near the battlefield of Chio and Hitaki Sakuma were either purple-faced and dying, or they were separated from each other by sword energy. The battlefield between Rasa and Tsunade was not pierced by a sudden attack of sand gold spears, hanging on the battlefield like a skewer. Otherwise, he would have died of pain due to the collapse of the earth and the shock wave of sand and stone that spread all over his body. Well, now there is one more person. Every time these three people fight, there will be all kinds of fire and water. From time to time, it will rain boiling water, which makes the other ninjas extremely upset. In comparison, the battlefield between Ebizo and Inoshika Cho is much better. The four of them are the ones who fight seriously. You give me a shuriken, and I give you a kanai. Shadow Deer lurks underground, Giant Butterfly provides damage resistance, and Heart Pig plays support. It simply as harmonious as you want. In this moment, the three of them started another wave of ninjutsu attacks. After resisting the aftermath, both of them were breathing heavily, with beads of sweat covering their heads. Even Yi Kang was more or less exhausted, and his exposed skin was dripping with sweat. Hey, you two have made good progress in strength during this period. You can already fight me to this extent. Yi Kang calmed down and looked at the two people opposite him while panting and saying. Thank you, Sister Yi Kang. If it's a one-on-one -on -one fight, we won't be able to hold on for long. Since we can't win alone, we can only avoid defeat in doubles. As Kaide responded, he and Lu Yan next to him seized the time to restore Chakra. Of course, Yi Kang did the same, and the masters all grabbed hold of Nakazawa Sukma and raced against time to restore Chakra. Cut, come again. Yi Kang recovered and started running Chakra. Just as he was about to fire another Scorch style, he heard a signal to retreat from behind. Yi Kang could only scratch his hair helplessly. It seems that this is all we can do today. See you two little devils again. Goodbye, Sister Yi. Hearing Kaide's words, Yi Kang twitched his lips, waved his hands, then turned around and retreated with the Sand Shinobi troops behind him. Ah, Sister Yi Kang is a good person, don't you think so, Lu Yan? Indeed, she is quite powerful. She is also quite beautiful. Feng, who originally didn't expect Lu Yan to answer, just turned around and heard the subsequent response. Hem, ha, huh, ah. Feng subconsciously responded, and after a moment of reaction, he looked at Lu Yan with white eyes. What was your last sentence? Lu Yan's face turned red quickly after he reacted, and he accidentally revealed his true thoughts. Lu Yan took two quick steps, slightly ahead of Feng, turned around and said fiercely. I didn't say anything. Let's go quickly and go back to the camp to rest. Oh, oh. Hearing the strange noise coming from behind Feng, Lu Yan sped up and the two bodies disappeared in front of Feng's eyes. Good guy, no way, no way. 
Feng looked at Lu Yan's leaving figure with a strange look on his face, rubbing his chin and thinking. Based on his nearly 30 years of experience in his past and present lives, this boy is probably having a romantic interest. Oh he he he, Yi Kang, this guy has pretty good eyesight. Hey, brat, what are you thinking about? A figure walked up to Feng and looked at Feng curiously and asked. Oh, Tsunade Sensei, it's nothing. I was thinking about the situation at Rock Shinobi. After Feng came back to his senses, he looked at the teacher next to him and said with a smile. Tisk, are you worried about your little girlfriend? Tsunade seemed to have read through Maple's thoughts, and he put his face next to Maple and said with a half smile. Ahem, I want to be a Hokage man, so of course I'm worried about everyone, well, I'm a little more worried about Kurinai. Feng laughed and was about to explain, but he finally lost his battle under Tsunade's gaze. You brat, you still want to hide it from me. Tsunade laughed and scolded before suddenly his face straightened. He said with some hesitation. By the way, if I ask you to go to the Rock Shinobi battlefield, will you go? Huh, Tsunade sensei, what are you referring to? Feng was a little confused and didn't know what Tsunade was talking about. Let me tell you this, because they left in a hurry, nearly half of the medical staff from the medical department came to the San Shinobi battlefield. Now with Rock Shinobi joining the battle, the village decided to take out three of the medical ninja 913 here. One of them will be transferred to the Rock Shinobi battlefield. Jiraiya will send the Abarame clan leader Abarame Shiwe to meet him halfway. Here, we are going to send 200 ninjas to escort along the way. Anyway, the battlefields on both sides are not too far apart, so it won't be too far. It will affect the situation here too much. What do you think, do you want to go? Duh. Feng pondered for a moment and then clapped his hands and decided. He was sent to the desert map as a water player. This bad environment reduced his strength by at least 20%. If it were at sea, Feng would even dare to fight against a weak shadow like Luo Sha. Challenge. This time I went to the Rock Shinobi battlefield, firstly to change to a normal environment, and secondly because Feng was really worried about Hong. Although it was said that Jiraiya was taking care of her and Yuhi Mahong was there, Kaide still couldn't worry about it, so she might as well go over and have a look. Okay, the team will set off on time at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I will tell them to pay attention to safety on the road, so, be careful. The two of them had returned to the Konoha camp, and they stood looking at each other. Tsunade showed a hint of worry as he spoke. He could still take care of his disciple on the San Shinobi battlefield, but it was different on the Rock Shinobi battlefield in the past. Rock Shinobi was not even a bit stronger than San Shinobi, even with Jiraiya despite the care, Tsunade still couldn't help but worry. Don't worry, teacher. Feng smiled, turned around and walked into the camp, and the sound came from far away. I am Tsunade Haim's disciple. Huh, you're going to Rock Shinobi Battlefield. In the tent, Shinosuke looked at Kaide in surprise, and even the other people in the tent focused on Kaide. Yes, the battlefield here is not very friendly to me, a water-style ninja. I want to go to Rock Shinobi to visit. Anyway, the village has sent a group of reinforcements. One more of me and one less of me will not have much impact. Ah, Kaide, you are going to the Rock Shinobi battlefield. Enko sat on the edge of the bed and swayed her legs, her cheeks bulging high, staring at Feng with a look of resentment. Unlike Feng, she didn't have many acquaintances here, and even her two teammates and captain had just formed a team not long ago. She was the only acquaintance of Kaide in this San Shinobi battlefield, and now that even this acquaintance was leaving, she felt that she suddenly became so lonely again. Hello, I was mainly worried about Hong in the past. Maybe I will be transferred back after a while. Don't be so pessimistic. Feng patted Anko on the shoulder and said something silently in the morning next to him as soon as he finished speaking. If you go over there, be safe. Well, thank you, morning brother. Feng said with a smile, although Beiyun has not been in this team for a particularly long time in the morning, he gets along extremely well with a few people. In Kaide's view, Zazai is someone who can give his back to him just like Shinosuke Rikahiko. Um, in the morning, Shang Feng nodded and stopped saying anything. He leaned against the wall and began to rest with his eyes closed. Since you have decided, I won't advise you anymore. Remember to tell Tsunade-sama before you leave. Don't worry, Captain. 
I've already told Mr. Tsunade that we will set off with the escort in a moment. You should also pay attention to safety here. After Feng finished his instructions, he approached Lu Yan and put his arms around his shoulders. Said with a playful smile. Hey, Lu Yan, why don't you give your brother a hug? Snort. Lu Yan snorted coldly, raised his hand and beat Feng's chest twice, then turned and walked towards his bed, leaving a few words in a voice that only the two of them could hear. Don't die. Feng's eyes moved slightly, he smiled and waved goodbye to several people in the tent before turning around and walking out of the tent. Gathered towards the gate of the camp. In the tent, several eyes stared silently at Feng's retreating back, saying nothing for a long time. Arriving here, Feng saw that the transportation team was preparing some medical supplies that were lacking in the Rock Shinobi battlefield, and was carrying them to the carriage one by one. Because the Sand Shinobi battlefield is not far from the Rock Shinobi battlefield, hundreds of ninjas have been arranged to escort them along the way. In addition, Jiraiya has also sent a response team. If we leave at 5 o'clock, it was almost time to meet up with the response team at dawn. At the front of the motorcade, Kaide saw Tsunade talking to a man wearing Konoha Janan clothing. When he got closer, Kaide also saw the latter's appearance clearly. He was a head taller than the current Feng, with a straight body and medium long black hair on the back of his head. A Konoha forehead protector is tied to the forehead. He has regular facial features, but the most peculiar thing is his eyes, which are pure white from the whites of the eyes to the pupils. It invisibly added a bit of majesty to him. Tsunade Sensei, here I come. The two people who noticed Kaide stopped talking, Tsunade pulled Kaide over and said with a smile. You brat, this is Hayuga Hazashi, the head of the branch house of the Hayuga clan, and the leader of this escort team. You will be under his control from now on. You are Kaide, I am Hayuga Hazashi, just call me captain. Before Feng could react, Hayuga Hazashi spoke first, with a smile on his serious face. Hello, Captain Hazashi, I am Uchiha Kaide. I am causing trouble for you. Please give me some advice. Feng responded with a hint of enlightenment in his heart. Good guy, why does it look so familiar to me? It turns out that this is the father of Hayuga Neji, one of the twelve young masters of Konoha in the future, the man who risked his life for his brother. Wait, Branch House, I remember if my mother was also from Branch House. Kaide's mother, Hayuga Mina, is also a genius in the Branch House, but because of the Hayuga family, she was not engraved with the caged bird seal since she was a child. The order when her mother was kicked out of the Hayuga family was also issued by the head family. Kaide noticed Hayuga Hazashi's forehead protector with his peripheral vision. If he was right, there should be a control seal, caged bird, there. The pedantic host house, the miserable branch house. It's almost time, we should go, Tsunade-sama. Let's go, Kaide. Hayuga Hazashi's voice brought Kaide back to reality. When Kaide looked up, he saw Hayuga Hazashi standing in the ready motorcade. Hayuga waved to himself. Teacher, goodbye, please take care of yourself here. Kaide turned around and waved to Tsunade, then prepared to get in the car and set off. Etc. Just then, Tsunade's voice came from behind. Um, Feng turned around in confusion. As soon as he turned around, he felt a cold feeling on his forehead. When he felt what it was, Feng was petrified on the spot. Hayuga Hazashi, who had been looking here, twitched the corners of his mouth twice, opened his mouth to say something but didn't say anything, and just turned his head and looked to the other side. After a while, the cold feeling disappeared, and Feng came back to his senses slightly. Looking at the smiling Tsunade in front of him, Feng was about to speak. He was interrupted by Tsunade. Be safe. I want to be a Hokage man in the future. After finishing speaking, Tsunade raised his hand and rubbed Kaide's head back and forth a few times before turning around and walking towards the Konoha camp without stopping. Feng came back to his senses and looked at the back of Tsunade who had walked into the Konoha camp. After staying for a moment, he turned around and walked towards the convoy. Set off, Hayuga Hazashi, who saw Kaide returning, ordered him to go down. The team of several hundred people began to move forward. At the gate of the Konoha camp, Tsunade, who had just left and returned, returned here again. He couldn't help but have a trace of worry in his eyes as he looked at the fleet of cars going away. What? Are you still worried about Feng? Hearing the voice coming from behind, 
Tsunade turned around and adjusted his emotions, nodding to signal the person. Senior Sakumo. Quote. The person who came was none other than Hitaki Sakumo. I understand your feelings, but if he wants to grow up, he can't always live in the shadow of our elders. He also needs to experience some setbacks, such as physical injuries, other people's eyes, and companions, dot die. But he shouldn't have to endure this at his age. After hearing these words, Tsunade clenched his fists and said with a trembling tone. He has no choice, and neither do we. Hatred and interests have led to these endless wars. We have all experienced these. If he wants to become Hokage, these are what he must experience. After finishing speaking, Hitaki Sakumo turned around and walked towards the camp. Believe him, I see the shadow of Hokage in this child. Maybe given time, your disciple will really become Hokage. Hitaki Sakumo's figure disappeared deep into the camp, leaving only Tsunade standing alone at the door in silence. After a long time, she turned and left. On the motorcade, Kaide and Hayuga Hazashi sat together. You are Sister Mina's child, right? Hazashi looked at Kaide next to him with mixed feelings in his heart, but he still asked. Yes, my mother is Hayuga Mina. Kaide was not too moved. After all, it was not the decision of the person in front of her that her mother was kicked out of the Hayuga clan. I saw you when you were little, but I didn't expect you to be so old. Hayuga Hazashi chatted about everything. Um. Fung responded calmly. For a long time, the silence between the two was broken. Fung, I'm sorry, we are a branch house, so. Hayuga Hazashi's eyes were full of guilt. After all, Hayuga Mina was the genius of their Hayuga clan, but just because she was in the branch house, she had no status at all. Because she violated clan rules. It's okay, Uncle Hazashi, these things have passed, I am living well now. Kaide also thought about this when she was a child, but when she grew up, she realized that her life might not be bad without the interference of the Hayuga clan. After all, compared to the Uchiha clan, the clan was more closed and pedantic. Hearing Kaide's words, Hayuga Hazashi smiled helplessly, why had he never heard anyone say anything about Kaide? But he is a branch house, so what can he do? As night falls, the departing convoy begins to rush to the next battlefield. The bright moon is in the sky, and the bright moonlight is scattered in the jungle through the leaves, barely allowing people to see the nearby environment clearly. Stop! Everyone rest where they are. Hayuga Hazashi, who was guarding the front of the car, gave the order, and the convoy that ran in the middle of the night stopped in a large open space and began to rest. Everyone sat together with their backs to their companions. When they were hungry, they took out a soldier's grain pill from their bag. If you are not hungry, just lean against the tree and close your eyes to rest. No one was on fire. In this wartime situation, it is possible to encounter enemy ninjas at any time, which may cause a violent attack on the location of the convoy and become the target of nocturnal animals. Hayuga Hazashi walked to Kaide and sat down. He took out a bottle of water from his arms and handed it to Kaide who was chewing Bing Liang pills across from him. Want some? Thank you captain. In the army, Kaide no longer calls Hayuga Hazashi by his name, but still calls him Captain. Fung took the kettle, took two sips, and finally swallowed the dry Bing Liang pills. Although it was not the first time he had eaten them, the taste of the Bing Liang pills was indeed not much different from chewing wax. Captain, would you like some soldier's food pills to refresh your mind? Kaide took out another Bing Liang pill and handed it to Hayuga Hazashi with a smile. Thanks. Hayuga Hazashi didn't refuse. After taking 933, he put it in his mouth and chewed it. When he couldn't swallow it, he could only take the water bottle and drink it with two mouthfuls of water. Phew, it's really cool, I really miss Ichiraku's ramen and barbecue meat. Hayuga Hazashi smiled helplessly after hearing Kaide's words. I'm a little greedy as you said. I really miss the octopus made by my wife. Wow, that sounds delicious. Feng's eyes shone. He kept swallowing his saliva. It has been almost two months since I came to the battlefield. Every day I have either military food pills or dry food, and I almost feel like a bird. If there is a chance, Feng can come to the clan as a guest. Hazashi looked at Kaide and smiled. 
For Kaide, in addition to feeling guilty, the information about Kenko uploaded from the battlefield during this period was under the pressure of intentional or unintentional propaganda from Serutobi Hirazan and the Uchiha clan. Feng and Lu Yan are also quite famous in Konoha now. As for Kakashi, he has been a household name since he graduated at the age of 5 and became a chunin at the age of 6. It's understandable that the Hyuga clan wants to make friends with such a genius, but Lu Yan is from the Uchiha clan, their mortal enemy, so he is not within their scope of consideration. Therefore, the only person who can make friends with is Kaide. Although Kaide's father is from the Uchiha clan, Kaide does indeed have the blood of the Hyuga clan. With the instruction of the senior leaders of the Hyuga family, Kaide's friendship with the Hyuga clan within a good range. Ha ha ha, I will definitely go. When I get back to the village, I will treat Captain Hazashi to eat ramen. Good. In this harmonious atmosphere, the adjustment time passed. Hayuga Hazashi stood up and ordered to continue moving forward, trying to meet the responding troops as soon as possible. Feng, who had been watching for the first half of the night, was finally able to rest in the middle of the night. He squeezed a gap in the large bag of medical supplies, Feng filled it in, closed his eyes and fell into a light sleep. In a daze, Kaide felt that the motorcade had stopped. Kaide, who subconsciously opened his eyes, saw hundreds of Konoha shinobi standing in front of the motorcade. The leading man was wearing a large windbreaker, a big hood, and a pair of sunglasses. The whole body except the face was wrapped tightly. It seems that they have met with the supporting force, and the leader should be Abarame Shoei, the leader of the Abarame clan. Thank you, Hazashi. Ha ha ha, it's okay. Let's go first. Our team is almost exhausted. After a short rest, we have to hurry up and go back there. Unexpectedly, the two seemed to have a pretty good relationship. Hundreds of ninjas brought by Abarame Shoei guarded both sides of the convoy, taking over from the ninjas who patrolled in the middle of the night. The convoy headed towards the Konoha camp not far away. After arriving at the destination, the convoy stopped at the gate of the camp. It was already dark at this time, because Sao Bing's ninjas also started working. A group of ninjas who had received orders in advance squatted at the gate of the camp. When they saw the approaching convoy, after verifying the information, the ninjas began to take action. Under the command of the medical ninjas, the medical supplies were handled with care and classified clearly. As for the group of ninjas brought by Hayuga Hazashi, at Hayuga Hazashi's signal, they were taken down to the camp to rest. Okay, let's go, Master Jiraiya is already waiting for you. Good. Hayuga Hazashi nodded, took two steps, then stopped and patted his head. Almost forgot. Hayuga Hazashi turned to look at Kaide, who was leaning against the door in the distance and yawning, and gave a low drink. Maple. Let's go. Oh, here comes Captain Hazashi. Feng Cheng cheered up and walked quickly behind the two of them, slapping his face as he walked to wake himself up quickly. Is this Lord Tsunade's apprentice? Abarame Shuei turned to look at Kaide, half of his face hidden in the shadow of his hood, making it impossible for others to know what he was thinking. Now that you know, I won't introduce you too much. Before leaving, Mr. Tsunade asked me to hand over Kaide to Mr. Jiraiya for arrangements, so I took him with me. Kaide, this is the Abarame clan leader. Hello, Chief Abarame, I am Uchiha Kaide. Please give me your advice in the future. Yeah, I know. After saying this, Abarame Jui stretched out his hand and quickly grabbed it and shook it. Immediately afterwards, Abarame Shuei turned around and walked forward. Hayuga Hazashi took a step behind and patted Kaide's shoulder helplessly. Clan leader Abarame is like this, but he is still a good person. Ha ha ha, I know, let's follow quickly, Captain Hazashi. Kaide followed the two of them and observed the surroundings while walking. The Konoha camp here and the camp on the San Shinobi battlefield were generally the same. If there was any difference, it would probably be the Rock Shinobi battlefield. There are significantly more ninjas stationed than those stationed at the San Shinobi battlefield. Tsunade once told Kaide that Konoha invested the least amount of troops in the San Shinobi battlefield. According to Kaide's visual inspection, Konoha's troops on the Rock Shinobi battlefield exceeded 10,000 at least. That is to say, Konoha, if it were Sunagakar, it would be enough to fight two villages. 
Cloud Shinobi Village is the second most powerful ninja village among the five major ninja villages, so there should be no problem in fighting two ninja villages equally. Like Konoha, every ninja war can be one with one versus four, which is the only one in the entire ninja world. Arrive. Unknowingly, several people had arrived in front of a tent, with two ninjas guarding the door. Aburame Shoe motioned for the two people to go in and report. After a while, the gatekeeper ninja came out and nodded to a few people and motioned for them to go in. Aburame Shoe and Hayuga Hazashi walked in front, followed by Kaide. After entering, Kaide heard a confused and surprised voice. Maple. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support my channel.